time, every time there's this important occasion in the life of our congregation, I'm always intrigued with what the lessons are going to be for that week. Um, now, I never cheat. I never look ahead. Because I want to be surprised uh, that week about what the texts are going to be. And, and what's remarkable is the number of times the texts so strongly correlate with what's happening in the church. So, last summer, last summer, we had the anniversary celebration gathered in the congregation right here with all those family members from the founding families just packed this place. And if you remember, what was the text that Sunday? Feeding of the 5,000. Feeding of the 5,000. It was a great story, you know. It's, it's five loaves, two fish, and, and able to feed everyone. And in fact, not only able to feed everyone, 12 baskets of leftovers. So I'm thinking to myself, we're a living example of that story. As we gathered in that place, remembering 300 years ago, that small community that began, and, and down to the years, the number of people who have been fed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm thinking, this is great. The sermon preaches itself. So, today's an important occasion. We're having a congregational meeting. Not just any congregational meeting. It's different from our usual December meeting uh, in that we're inviting a conversation about the life and ministry of our church as we go forward. So, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what the lesson is going to hold this week. And what occurs, I read that passage from Zephaniah. Zephaniah! How many times did you get a chance to preach from Zephaniah? <laughs> what does it say? Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst. Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst. And I'm thinking to myself as I read those words. They're words we need to hear. A promise we need to embrace. A certainty we need to claim. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be weary or undone because the promise of God is this. The Lord, our God, is in our midst. That's an incredible proclamation of the good news. The promises of God. But here's the issue. The conundrum. The struggle of faith. See if this resonates with you. Why is it that the things that scare us, the things that challenge us, seem more real, more true, more certain than the promises of God. Why is that? It's true, but why is that? I'll make it very real for you. Everyone gathered here, you received a letter in the mail, did you not? From the church council. I got one too. <laughs> Two pieces. One side are all the possibilities for ministry. All that we can do for the sake of Christ in this place. Here is outlined the promises of God. Exciting and wonderful. Wow, this is good news. Over here. Yeah, that's good news. Let me tell you something. Mm, the delta between the ministry by the church and our financial uh, commitments to this point. Eh, a little scary. How did you react? See, my guess is this seems more real than this. This seems more real than this. Fears over the promises. 
And I'm here to tell you, pastors are not in you. Pastors are not in you. You think with a collar we have something protective around us, but we don't. This is what I proclaim always. Promises of God. This is what keeps me up at night. More than one night. I can read the numbers. I understand them. I understand the fear involved. I have spent hours, hours and days trying to figure out how to make this work. More specifically, what can I do? And on the darkest nights, what have I failed to do? That's the struggle of faith. Why is it? that our fears seem more real than the promises of God. That struggle has been around forever. Has been. It's why I love, in the Gospel of Matthew, the story of Peter. It's a great story. And you all know it. Peter is in the boat with the disciples, and they're making their way across the Sea of Galilee, and it's not easy going. The wind's against them, the waves are high and rolling, and they're making their way across it, and then out, out, out of the boat, out on the water, they see Jesus walking on the water. It's impossible. You, you, you just can't do that in this world. And so they're terrified, and they're all thinking, it has to be an illusion, it has to be a ghost. It can't be Jesus, because you can't do that. But not Peter, not Peter. Peter believes that it is Jesus. And he has the audacity to say, Jesus, if you'd have me come out, I will come. And Jesus says to Peter, then come on, Peter. And for that moment, and in that time, Peter actually believes the promises. And he gets out of the boat, and what does he do? He starts walking on the water. Making his way. Until what? He notices the wind, becomes aware of the waves, and he gets scared. And his fear <laughs> overcomes the promises, and he sinks like a stone. Tell me you don't understand, Peter. You get that, don't you? I think of all the times I have been like Peter. In fact, if I'm honest, I am Peter. I am. We get it. Because we understand the struggle of faith. But here's the great news in that story. What does Jesus wind up doing? He takes Peter by the hand. And he says, why did you ever die? And he lifts him up. That's the story of our lives. We have this great capacity to sink like stones because our fears overwhelm the promises of God. And again and again, we proclaim the Holy One who takes us by hand and says, why did you doubt? And lifts us up. I mean, that's really the story of Peter because he doesn't do it a one time only. No, this is a repeated pattern of Peter. You think in that last week, right before the crucifixion, what does Peter do? His fears overwhelm the promises of God and he winds up denying Jesus three times. Three times. I don't even know the man. But every time, every time, Jesus takes him by the hand and lifts him up. That's the incredible story of the gospel. We struggle to hold on to the promises of God, but God, who remains faithful and in his promises, holds on to us. Lifts us up again and again until we can stand. And that's the story of Peter, because in the end, that's exactly what Peter winds up doing. In the end, he trusts in those promises that before were too short of his fears. 
And in the end, as he is martyred, he holds on to those promises and he stands. And in the end, in the end, Peter, he walks on water. My prayer for us in our own journey, in our own struggles, is for exactly that. Like the miracle of Peter. That. We come to trust those promises that they might overwhelm our fears. And that you and I, you and I, held by those promises of God, will stand in our own way walk on water. Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.